Welcome everyone to the VBC Bible Institute and podcast and welcome to a special, I guess we'll call this quiz uh, assignment, some homework. I, I don't know what we should call this, but today the goal was to, well, have class number two. I was going to record a full a full class of teaching and continue our study of Psalm 119, but as you can hear, my voice probably would not hold up for an entire hour of teaching. So, I didn't want you to feel like you have been forgotten. I didn't want you to feel like you have been abandoned. I wanted all the students to realize that I am aware that you need something to do, right? I mean, you have nothing else to do this evening. So I'm going to give you a little quiz. Very simple, very small. And one, I guess part of this quiz will be something that will require a little bit of work and research, but nothing too time consuming, all right? Just a little bit of your time this evening or whenever you can. Remember, we're under no time constraints here, but I think it will facilitate and help increase your learning as you continue to meditate and work on Psalm 119. Now, don't forget your required reading. You're supposed to be working on an exposition of Psalm 119 by Thomas Manton, Puritan pastor. If you need a copy of the book, I can get it to you for free. Just email me at newsif at yahoo.com newsif at yahoo.com. I'll send you a link to the PDF file absolutely free. As you're reading that book, remember you need a notebook and you're writing down your observations, your thoughts, your questions, just anything that Thomas Manton is saying about Psalm 119 and anything in Psalm 119 itself. So please be working on that. All right. Also gave you some other things to look uh, to work on. If you remember in Psalm 119, in fact, let me turn uh, my Bible to Psalm 119. You're supposed to be looking, Psalm 119, verses 1 to 24. Psalm 119, verses 1 to 24. And you're supposed to be looking at eight, I guess we'll call them, names that Psalm 119 uses for the scriptures. All right, In Psalm 119, they use different names to, for the scriptures. For example, uh, blessed are the, un I'm reading Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Psalm uh, 119 verse 1 uses the title or name of law to describe God's word. You're supposed to find eight of those in Psalm 119 verses 1 to 24. So make sure you're working on that. All right. Now, are you ready for a mini quiz and, and what are the questions is going to require you to do some work? Are, are you ready? Okay. We In our study of Psalm 119, I gave you four reasons that make Psalm 119 a special or unique chapter. I may have used unique. I may have used the word special. But there are four reasons I gave you. Now, you'll have to go back and listen carefully because I don't specifically say, here are the four reasons, all right? I don't make it that obvious, but if you think about it, even if you haven't listened to the first lecture, the first class on Psalm 119, if you really think about it, you should be able to come up with it, all right? Four things that make Psalm 119 special, makes it unique. I have the four written down right here in front of me, but I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give them to you. All right. Okay. All right. So, four things that make Psalm 119 a special chapter and or a unique chapter. All right. Think about it. Write those four things down. Next, some believe that Psalm 119 is an expansion of Psalm 19 verses 7 through 11. Some, commenta some commentators and some commentaries believe Psalm 119 is an expansion of Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. If that is true, what, um, what does that tell us about who the possible author is, the human author is, of Psalm 119? Let me state it again. Some commentaries believe Psalm 119 is an expansion of Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11. If that is true, 
What does it tell us about who the possible human author is of Psalm 119? If Psalm 19 is an expansion, if Psalm 119 is an, an expansion of Psalm 19, what would that possibly tell us in regards to who the author would be of Psalm 119? All right. Psalm 119 is an expansion of Psalm 19. That's the claim. If that is true, what does it tell us about who the author, human author is of Psalm 119? You have to really think about that. You have to really think about that. It's open book. It's open book. So please grab a Bible and go look at Psalm 19. It should scream at you and should be pretty obvious if you don't remember from our lecture on Psalm 119. All right. Everybody got that? Okay, now in Psalm 19, starting in verses 7 through 14, okay, yeah, pretty, pretty much through 7 through 14, in Psalm 19, if you remember, in Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6 speaks of general revelation, God revealing himself through creation, starting in verse, that's Psalm 19, verses 1 through uh, six. Starting in verse seven, it switches from general revelation to special revelation. And that special revelation is the written word of God. And Psalm 19 verses seven and following does something very unique. There's kind of an interesting three-part structure for every verse. And each verse, maybe not every single one of them, but most of them, we find this idea. We get a name for the scripture, a, you know, a name or a title for the scriptures. We get a, a um, we get a teaching on the character of the scriptures, right? Because it says, "Hey, here's what the scriptures should be called. Here's a name for the scripture. Here's its character, and it tells us what it accomplishes." So, in Psalm 19, verses seven and following, we get this idea of, hey, "Okay, here's a name for the scripture. Here's its character, and here's what it accomplishes." Let me explain how this works. In verse 7 of Psalm 19, we read that we, we find the name of the, that's given to the scripture in, in verse 7. In fact, I'll just open up my Bible here. The law, the law, so the Bible is referred to as the law. God's word is called the law. All right, everybody see that? It's referred to as law, the law of the Lord to be exact. It's Character is that it is perfect, and what it accomplishes, it converts the soul. So we get three things in this first part of, of verse 7. We get, number one, the description or name of Scripture. It is called the law of the Lord. It's character. It is perfect, and what it accomplishes, it converts the soul. Continue in verse uh, 7. The testimony of the Lord. We have a name for Scripture. It's called the testimony of the Lord. Its character, it is sure, and what it accomplishes, it make it making wise the simple. And verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. All right, we have the name for scripture, statutes of the Lord. We have its character, right. We have what it accomplishes, rejoicing the heart. The next part of verse 8, the commandments of the Lord. Commandments, that's the name given for the scriptures here. Commandments of the Lord. We have its character. It is pure. And what it accomplishes, it enlightens the eye. All right? Now, in verse 7 and verse 8, in verse 7 and verse 8, okay, I'm gonna, I've got an assignment for you, but I'm not going to give you that assignment right now. I'm not going to give you that assignment right now. What we're going to do for this quiz is you're going to have to focus on verse 9. All right? You're going to have to focus on verse 9. All right, so so far you see how it works. A name for scripture, its character, what it accomplishes. It's very simple in verse 7 and 8. There's no question. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And then we read verse 9, and there seems to be a change. Because all of a sudden in verse 9, it says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Now, are we going to say, 
that the fear of the Lord is a name of scripture, that the scriptures are called the fear of the Lord here. Its character is it's clean and what it accomplishes, it endures forever. Uh, that's, it's not quite fitting the pattern perfectly, right? Enduring forever would be kind of a part of its, um, would be more along its character, right? It doesn't really tell us what it accomplishes, Right? So the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Exactly what do we do with verse 9? All right, so this is what your assignment is, or this is kind of the question you need to answer or work on for this quiz. You ready? All right. Do we understand verse 9 to simply be, be just calling God's word the fear of the Lord, or do we have to interpret verse 9 as not following the pattern of verse 7 and 8? 7 and 8 is all about the scriptures, giving them a name, its character and what it accomplishes. And all of a sudden in verse 9, it's not giving us a name for scripture. It is literally just talking about the fear of God and its character. It is clean and it endures forever. How do we understand verse 9? Now, this is simple. This is simple. This is your assignment for this quiz. Look up as many commentaries as you can find on verse 9. All right? I'll make it simple for you. If you go to BibleHub.com. In fact, let me make sure that uh, website will work for you. BibleHub.com. Yes. Go to Bible, uh, BibleHub.com and as soon as you open it, you're going to have a, you can enter a reference or keyword and you should be able to find all the commentaries. You should be able to find all the commentaries that you need. Okay. Biblehub.com. If you can't, if you get to Biblehub.com and you can't figure out how it works, do this. Go to Google. Do a search for Psalm 19, Psalm 19 verse 9. Now, it will, when it brings up all the results, look carefully. One of those will be BibleHub.com. You'll click on it, and guess what it's going to open up? Psalm 19, verse 9. First, it's going to show you the verse and how it's translated and a number of translations, probably like 10 or 15 translations. And then underneath that, it's going to have commentaries. And then when you think there's only two or three commentaries, look carefully. It'll say more commentaries. Click on that. It's going to open up like 10, 12 commentaries on Psalm 19, verse 9. Read each one. And I want you to write down on paper, okay, how many commentaries say Psalm 19, verse 9, when it says the fear of the Lord? That's just a, just a title for the scriptures, right? How many say, well, it's not really a title of the scriptures, but it's something else. I'm not going to tell you what they say. I already know what they say. I'm going to have you look that up. Have you do a little research because when you're when you're reading the scriptures and you notice this pattern seven, okay, we we've got a, we 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 begin to establish the pattern in seven, right? We have a, a title for God's word, law of the Lord. We have its character. It's perfect. We have what it does, converting the soul. The second part of verse seven, we have a title for the scriptures testimony of the Lord. We have what uh, its character, it's sure. We have what it does, making wise the simple. I know what you're saying. You're repeating yourself. I know, but I want you to get this section down, but I want you to, sh I'm trying to give you a little hermeneutics lesson here, okay? So we see a pattern developing in seven. Eight continues the pattern. We have a name for the scriptures, the statutes of the Lord. We have its character, our right. We have what it does, rejoicing the heart. Ver, uh, the uh, second part of verse 8, the same pattern continues. We have a title for the scriptures, the commandments of the Lord. We have its character. It's pure. We have what it does, enlightening the eyes. And then we get to verse 9. So logically, you would want that pattern to continue, correct? The fear of the Lord, okay? Okay, the fear of the Lord. It's just, just a name for scripture. Now, what does that mean? We have its character. is clean. But wait a minute. Enduring forever. Huh. That's not what it does. Right? Or is it what it does? Or is it more about its character? Right? See, the pattern is being broken a little bit. Now, look at verse, the, the second part of verse 9. The judgments of the Lord. All right? That's another name for scripture. All right? The pattern returns. Are true. Okay? Um, 
are true and righteous altogether. Now, it doesn't tell us what it does. All of that is its character. All right. Verse 10 well, we, we can go on in verse 10. Well, we'll, we'll break that down in, in, in a later lesson, in a later uh, you know, special message. We'll do a special message. But I want you to really work on verse 9, right? And instead of making you try to figure it out, because, you see, this is a situation where people will, would, would get into an argument. You would have, if we were sitting around a table and, we, and, we, and I brought this up, some people say, well, wait a minute. 7 and 8 has a pattern. Verse 9 has to follow that pattern. So the fear of the Lord has to be a title for the scriptures. And I would be like, you could make that argument, but the verse doesn't follow the pattern because it doesn't tell us what it does. It simply describes its character. So it's already breaking the pattern. So it's a new pattern being established in verse 9. If it... But is it changing the subject completely? Is it saying, hey, I've been talking about the scripture. Now let's talk about the fear of the Lord. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense hermeneutically. So the fear of the Lord has to be connected to the scriptures in some way. What's the connection here? Is it a title for the scriptures? Or are they, or is the psalmist trying to say something in regards to God's word and the fear of the Lord? That is what I want you to work on. And again, find commentaries and write down. Try to. Here's what I want you to do. Read it, all the commentaries you can find at BibleHub.com. All right. If you have more, that's fine. Make a list, right? Like write down the name of the commentary and write down it. You can summarize. You don't have to write down everything they say. Summarize their interpretation, right? Then go commentary number two, write its name. It's just summarize its interpretation. Commentary number three. When you are done writing down what a summary of what each commentary says, then Try to create like five of them say this, four of them say this. Summarize your findings. Do six say this? Do five say this? Do four say this? And then you'll see how much disagreement there is or how much agreement there is. And then you are left with a choice. Do you go with the majority view? Let's say you have eight commentaries who agree and you have one that disagrees. Do you go with the one or the eight? Now, this is a, I, I want you to encounter this. I know we're very early on in the VBC Bible Institute. We're really in course number one, but I already want you to begin to struggle with how sometimes Bible interpretation and hermeneutics work. People grab commentaries and many times they go with the first one they see or they'll go with the majority view. Well, what happens if the majority view is wrong? Right? Right? How, how can we be sure? You're, first, just determine how many say what, summarize it, and then, then you give a little total at the end, all right? And then if you have questions or you're confused by, if you're confused by what the commentaries are saying, you don't even understand what the commentaries ask me the question and we can do a special recording on it, all right? I'm not going to explain that again because I think I've already explained it enough and you're probably like, I get, I get it. If you don't understand... Man, my voice hurts bad. Trying to talk is hard tonight. Email me at newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com and say, hey, explain that to me again. What exactly am I looking for? I think I've made it pretty clear, but if you have any questions, let me know. All right? So work on those questions. Do I need to repeat all the questions again? I gave you in lesson number one, I gave you four reasons, uh, four things that make Psalm 119 unique and special. What are those four things? Number two, some believe that Psalm 119 is an expansion of Psalm 19 verses 7 through 14. If that is true, what does that teach us? What does that tell us about who the possible human author is of Psalm 119? All right, and number three, Psalm 19, starting in verse 7, a pattern is established where three things are, are seen in each verse dealing with the scriptures, its name, its character, and what it does. Verse 9 seems to break this character, and uh, break this pattern, and not only does it break the pattern, we have to now figure out this idea of the fear of the Lord. Is that a, is that a title for the scriptures, or are they trying to say something else? Your job, go to BibleHub.com. Look at 
many commentaries as you can find there. Write down commentary number one, the name of the commentary. Just summarize what they say, commentary number two, what they say, and then at the end, figure out how many agree, how many disagree, and then, well, you can tell me what you think. You can even write down what you think or what you believe the right interpretation is, and you can even justify it, and that will be extra credit if you write out your interpretation and your justification for your interpretation, that would be extra credit, all right? All right, very simple, not too time consuming. You are not. You don't have to write a paper. Okay. Just gonna look at some commentaries. Just write down summaries, pretty straightforward. All right, there you have it. So may God bless you as you study, as you think, as you continue to meditate on Psalm 119, what we are establishing in course number one is the priority and supremacy that the scripture should have in your life. And then we will move into Bible study methods. And we're going to do the Bible study methods completely in an order that I have never taught them in before. I'm going to do it completely different and uh, we'll see how it goes. It may turn into a, a disaster, but you'll, you'll, get to be a, you'll get to be a part of the disaster. All right, there you have it. A little, a little quiz time for the VBC Bible Institute. I know some of you don't want to actually sign up for the Institute and email me and turn in your assignments. That's perfectly okay. If you're learning, if this helps in your discipleship, if you take this material and use it in your church, I don't care what you do with it. If this can benefit people growing in the grace and knowledge of God, helping them in their spiritual life, create, helping disciple Christians, overcoming the biblical illiteracy that is rampant in the American church, give people some spiritual food, give them something to do, not just listen to someone, but they can, they can dig in for themselves. I hope I can facilitate and accomplish at least one of those things, if not all of them. All right, thank you for listening. Any questions, email me at newsif at yahoo.com, all right? And if you, if for some reason you hear this on a podcast platform, Podcast Addict, Spotify, I don't know, all the different places we currently are. If you hear this and you would like to actually be able to listen to when I do these live quizzes or a live lesson um, and listen to all the other podcasts, Look, the really only way to actually pull it off is go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and download the Spreaker app. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Spreaker. Download the app. Do a search for V-B-C. V-B-C. That's Victory Baptist Church. Once you find us, tap. It's going to open a page. It's going to say Victory Baptist Church. In the top right-hand corner, there's a little star. Tap that star. Underneath where it says VBC, it will say by Victory Baptist Church. Tap the words Victory Baptist Church. It will open our profile. On that profile page, guess what you'll see? A big yellow button that says follow. Tap on that follow. Underneath, you'll see all of our podcasts, all of them. Theology Central, Theological Musings, VBC, Socratic Circle, the, the Non-Catholic Catholic. All, you're going to see all of them. Go under each one, tap the little star. Okay, you're going to be following us. You've now made us a, a favorite. And guess what? You'll get notifications when we upload a podcast to any one of those shows. And you'll get notified when we go live. Then you can keep up with everything. All right? And for people who are going to be Following the VBC Bible Institute, you'll definitely want to be listening to the sermons because sometimes the sermons will be directly related to what you're studying in the VBC Bible Institute. Yeah. See, it can help you out. In fact, you may even get uh, answers to questions asked in a quiz, all right? So there you have it. If you are following along and you want to be an actual student, email me at newsif at yahoo.com once you complete a course. We're going to work on uh, trying to get certificates to people who complete each course, all right? And then over time, we'll see what that can ultimately turn into. But send your work to me at newsif at yahoo.com. 
And uh, well, we'll see. Right now, it's easy to maintain. It may it, this could turn into something big, and then it may be I may be uh, you know maybe beyond my ability to maintain everything. But that's way that's way down the road. Right now, we're small, insignificant, and few people are listening. That's okay. You just have to be patient and see what God wants to do with this, and we'll we will see. All right, I'll stop right there. Everyone, have a great night. Remember. Be reading Psalm 119, reading, working on that book, an exposition of Psalm 119 by Thomas Manton. Be thinking, meditating, really, really, really live within Psalm 119 during this course. And I promise you, it will benefit you spiritually and benefit you greatly. All right, everyone have a great night. God bless.